and welcome. The World Economic Forum says that India struggles to demonstrate solid progress towards gender parity. In fact, India ranks a low 124th as far as economic participation and opportunity for women is concerned. Our Mukundan of Tata Chemicals joins us to discuss that and more. So, what are the key challenges that India faces as far as empowering its women workforce is concerned? Yeah, well, one of the issues, challenges has been, I think, we've, we've not created the right environment for building the capacity of uh, uh, women employees at the entry level and then taking it all the way through to the, let's say, the board, the senior executive position. So in, in my view, I think some sectors have seen the shift when you look at uh, IT, when you look at pharmaceutical, when you look at uh, sectors like, uh, uh, let's say, some of the service sectors. Certainly they've seen a shift, uh, take hospitality and uh, sectors such. Uh, but I think in many, many large parts of the sectors which are manufacturing, I think uh, uh, both corporates and the colleges at the intake level and our entire system of education, we need to work hard to put more women through that system. It has two benefits. As women get educated, uh, they force the men to get educated because it, it clearly creates a situation where men can't find spouse if they are not educated enough, so they need to work hard. So it forces everybody, it raises the bar for everybody. And secondly, I think it also creates a generation of kids when they have, who will also be educated. So I think laying emphasis on women education, I think is first and primary priority, which we all should work towards. In my view, government has very flexible programs today. For example, SNDT University allows you to graduate if, even if you have dropped out of school at whatever stage, and it allows you to go through graduation without the pain of going through 10th and 11th and 12th. And we got to look at these innovative structures to get women through. And if you can get more and more women through the education and then get them into workplace, uh, I think we will uh, certainly start to begin to solve the problem. Okay, there's a perception that there are certain kinds of work that women can do uh, and that they are not necessarily the right fit for several sectors, for instance, manufacturing. Now, uh, you know, as head, as, uh, as head of one of uh, India's manufacturing companies, would you tend to agree or disagree with that view? In some cases, I think the laws do make a, make a big issue in the sense that I think there are work timings, restrictions which are there, which have been mandated because of the right reasons. I don't, I don't think we should question that. And I think we should, uh, if the right conducive environment is not there to become flexible on that time, I think is, is a big risk So for the safety issue. So if you want to be careful about safety and continue to work with the timing restriction, I think uh, we used to believe that it's tough to get that, uh, get that equation right. Uh, when IFC came and spoke to us and told us about this US company, Fine Chem, which is all women run plant. So if a chemical plant can be all women run, there is no reason, and it's in US, uh, there's no reason we can't get there. But I think there are steps and stages to get there, so we need to get more women to come and work in manufacturing in the general shift initially. And But to do that, you have to sensitize the men on the shop floor they must be uh, sensitive enough so that when women employee comes on the sh shop floor, uh, th they, they at least understand the sensitivities of that, that employee because what may be a casual comment may be very offensive, the way the women would receive it. So I think we need to be careful. So one of the tasks of companies in manufacturing is to sensitize the existing current employees and their management and also create work environment which is welcoming of women and finally uh, start to get them in places which is within the current legal framework. Uh, you know, apart from companies uh, taking these steps, is it also important that uh, in some way the education system needs to be sensitized to this and that uh, perhaps women should be encouraged to uh, undertake more courses which will lead them to several other sectors? Absolutely, and I think uh, we need to have an education system which is both for getting graduation, also skill-based. If you look at uh, precision engineering, if you look at watchmaking, for example, uh, or electronics assembly, those assembly lines are ma uh, actually, uh, I wouldn't say manned, are actually, uh, the, the women run it, those assembly lines. It's not uh, necessary that uh, uh, you, you need to have a factory shop floor which is uh, run by men. And uh, uh, clearly, we need to lay emphasis on skill development for women. We also need to lay emphasis on graduation degree and get them through these programs. Two benefits, one is the household where women is working, they, there's double income num initially and also it empowers the woman because then she becomes more confident and a household where you've got a woman with confidence actually is a more healthy household. Okay, uh, you know 80% of uh, corporate positions uh, are still, uh, leadership positions are still held by men. 
do you see that changing and how what is the pace do you, uh, that you see it, uh, it's, changing it's, it, it is it is going to change if you see the workforce which is coming in it's more general uh, gender balanced uh, but for I think it's going to take time for this to shift. Uh, I'm actually surprised that 88%, only 80% is men. In my mind, actually, the percentages are even higher, uh, and women are much smaller in number. I think for that number to grow from, let's say, 20% to, let's say, 30 40%, it's going to take at least uh, 10, 15 years of persisting with the program to make sure that intake is more balanced. And uh, we also continue to ensure that as, as the numbers increase, the environment will become more and more conducive. And that uh, persistence to make the environment uh, conducive and also create mentorship between uh, women leaders and women managers, women employees, and also sensitive men managers. And I lay the emphasis that not everyone is ready for this. So I think we need to sensitize and be, uh, and, and then make the mentors of women managers. What kind of board participation uh, uh, do you see women uh, having as far as corporate India is concerned? I think uh, it's very handful today. If you look at most boards, it's a, it's a male bastion and uh, clearly the company law is going to bring about a change. But it's helpful. I would not say it's, it's uh, right or wrong. It's, it's a helpful right step uh, and it's after all saying one woman director. Uh, I think uh, if you want a natural progression coming through the system where um, you got a large number of women who then become qualified to be on the board because they progress through careers, I think for us to get to a number where the board is also more gender balanced, it will take a long time for us. But would ma will mandating, uh, uh, you know, having one woman board member actually help in that sense or will it be of more cosmetic value? Every little step helps. And I think mandating does help in many ways. It, it's better than not having a mandate. If there was no mandate, even the hope of getting there is not going to. So it's, 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 it's a right step in the right direction. Uh, and I think uh, uh, what uh, we should do is that while that mandate has been created right now, there'll be scrambled to fill those posts. Uh, over a period of time, the corporates must deliver on their uh, promise that they will develop more women managers who are trained who can then become eligible or who come on the board with the experience and uh, 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 and it's not just one which is mandated it is more than one which is voluntary uh, do you see that uh, do you see a, a pipeline of sufficient uh, such women executives who can actually go on to take uh, board positions many of them today are at entry level so i think we need to th there are some sectors where this pipeline exists already so i think if you look at as I said, consulting, manufacturing, uh, uh, pharmaceutical or IT, these, this pipeline is stronger. But in many cases where the pipeline is not strong, we need to, at least the shift is happening at the entry level. Now the challenge for companies is to make sure that they can manage the entire flow in the pipe. Uh, you know, the perception is that the higher a woman goes as, uh, as far as an organization is concerned, the tougher it is to break the glass ceiling. Would you agree or disagree with that view? It's true, maybe, it, but but bigger challenge is the uh, leak in the pipeline. I think uh, we call it a, because somewhere around the and everybody goes through life stage event, and the way we are, our society is structured today, the life stage events are actually much more difficult for a woman than for a man, and uh, be it marriage, be it uh, having children. I think both these create. Uh, uh, issue for at, at that life stage. So anywhere between 25 to 35 is when all the stress builds up. And that 10 year period, with, which is which I would call the uh, leaky pipe decadal uh, period, I think if companies can manage that process and be sensitive to about flexi hours, flexi timing so that, and also allow women uh, more days off if it's possible, they will be able to retain them. The, in the worst case, also give them re-entry back in the company. And not, not, notwithstanding anything, because you, you then at least get the talent which is loyal. And uh, we found that uh, women employees do tend, tend to be more stable in work environment once they cross this hump. Okay, there's also a perception that uh, women employees are, uh, uh, are more dependable and, uh, uh, you know, in that sense, uh, uh, are more hardworking and more competent. Would I, you tend I would to say, uh, in, in, in many ways, they bring about a balance in workforce, and there is uh, certainly, in, in my view, uh, 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 women bring a lot more sensitivity at the workplace. And I think it's very critical that we build sensitive workplaces rather than hard and uh, 
uh, insensitive workplace. What kind of entrepreneurship uh, are you seeing, you know, as far as women in business is concerned? It's uh, at, it, there are some iconic leaders today with, uh, you know, whether you talk about Kira Mazmudar Shah or people who made it. And I think uh, these are people we can look up to. Uh, certainly, uh, in, again, in proportion, it tends to be lesser. Uh, we need to uh, encourage this. Uh, maybe entrepreneurship is not even taught to women at, uh, uh, in, in the colleges. Uh, but certainly when you get down to villages, when you look at the small uh, self-help groups, it's the women's self-help group which works better. And in fact, we've seen the entrepreneurial uh, spirit in the villages to make, uh, make it a success is much, much stronger. I think uh, what happens in an urban setting is there's an element of risk aversion which sets in. And uh, uh, we, we, we must encourage that failing is part of the f uh, process of being an entrepreneur and risk-taking ability should be encouraged. And I think uh, we should, with this whole issue of women bank, women lending for women business, uh, the whole process probably is going to get a fill-up. So we should laud the efforts which are being put in place. The last question. Three things that India needs to do uh, to empower its uh, women workforce. Number one, I think we must we must insist on law and order, which is absolutely critical. I think to say that you will do everything else, but we will not have a safe place for women to be, I think is, is a tough act. We cannot uh, have this uh, overhang of fear in women and then say, no, no, we'll then make them work. Secondly, I think we must put a lot of emphasis on women education. I think uh, girl-child education, I think, should receive priority. And uh, if we can get them through the vocational training, stroke the graduate degree, if that, that is our ambition. We would have created a pool of talent for industry to, uh, for industry to look towards attracting. And industry keeps saying there's a shortage of talent, shortage of talent. I think this will fill the gap. And uh, then we need uh, companies to create sensitive workplaces. Okay, sir. Thank you so much for Thank joining us. Thank you so us. much.